In the light of the uh, upcoming workshop, the 10th of May, on uh, service agreements, um, which questions do you need to consider before going into the SA? Yeah, I mean, before you go in and sign a, a service agreement, you need, be, need, you need to be clear about your objectives, I would say. Uh, you need, need to be clear about what capabilities and competences you have internally and what, what type of contract you want to have. And that is something you need to be clear about before you start negotiating a contract. So uh, one option would be that you go for a long-term full-service contract, which probably is, let's say, the easiest way because you leave everything to uh, the turbine supplier and then price is the only thing more or less that you need to negotiate and maybe also availability guarantee levels but it's it's um, let's say it's limited interfaces you would have to the turbine supplier um, on the other extreme you have if you are uh, let's say a, a large-scale ut electric utility then you have your own service divisions in-house. You may have even some local providers of services that you have for certain areas or for certain markets that you want to use. So what you are um, <clears throat> uh, targeting is a kind of hybrid approach, combining both qualified services from the turbine supplier, let's say some standard services from independent service providers, or um, services that are being taken over by your internal service divisions. So, and, uh, and that requires, of course, much more flexibility from the turbine supplier. And you need to come uh, to an agreement on how to structure and manage this transition phase, uh, taking over uh, from the turbine supplier after warranty period, for example, um, also availability guarantee. That is, if, you sh if you're going for a hybrid solution, then probably you won't get an availability um, a guarantee because the turbine supplier is not in charge of the full service scope. And there are things like that that need to be considered. Mm. Okay. How to negotiate the SA? Yeah, <clears throat> um, the SA normally is a contract that uh, initially is provided by the turbine supplier. If you're not in the position um, that you have your own service agreement that you have already used for other projects, um, then the probability that you base the service contract on the proposal that is coming from the turbine supplier is, is very, uh, very high. So, but then um, the longer, I would say, and this is the rule of thumb, <laughs> the longer this, uh, in terms of pages, uh, just simply counted, um, the longer this contract is, the more risk you need to expect on your side because the turbine suppliers, they learn from their experience with other uh, service contracts and they put all the, the failures they have experienced into the contract to get rid of the, of the risk. So it is probably not to avoid um, uh, to go through the service contract in detail and go through every each, uh, par every and each paragraph uh, to consider who is taking the risk and, and how much cost uh, is connected to that. Okay. Thank you. If you compare aerospace with wind, what do we lack in our SA and how should it be implemented? Yeah, I mean, I've been working in aerospace and aerospace, um, <coughs> of course, due to the nature of the product, uh, it's very much quality driven. So security is, is a, a very highly evaluated criteria uh, in, in service. And that actually is also a good uh, benchmark for wind power because uh, um, quality standards in service for wind power has not uh, been in proximity of, let's say, what we know from the aerospace industry. The question is, of course, whether it is necessary, but it can a, at least be a, a good benchmark uh, to compare with what is possible. Um, so um, high availability numbers, uh, but uh, going away from just a time-based availability, but more in, uh, to uh, a production-based availability that would require from the turbine supplier not only keeping uh, the turbine up and running, but scheduling also the, the maintenance uh, time uh, in, in periods where we have low wind. Uh, so that requires more, more management. Uh, then in addition, for example, uh, what is known from the aerospace industry, there's this kind of um, power by the hour concept where you, for example, if you talk about uh, aero engines, uh, that you pay for the hour of operation for your turbine engine, which is, let's say, 
uh, a concept that is very much related to um, the, the operational uh, um, type, how you, how you run your turbine. So, that, and there is, I think, um, things like that that you can look at in order to increase uh, quality and service levels in, also in wind power. And, and one additional thing is if you compare um, service levels from independent service providers and turbine suppliers, mm -hmm. then that's a clear difference. Um, so independent service provider continuously and have uh, be, have been performing much better than turbine suppliers according to uh, surveys that ha has been have been uh, performed in Germany. So in the last year, actually, there was a significant improvement from the uh, OEMs, from the turbine suppliers, but there is still a significant gap. So there is a lot to do on their side. Thank you, Thiel.